one of the most iconic video games in the history of the medium, and one of the most controversial. There's been a lot of debate and panic over what Doom can do to our minds. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to cover the Doom series on Screen Therapy. Although I've really only covered calming and touching games in this series so far, I don't want to turn a blind eye to action or FPS games. In fact, I'd like my channel to be a place to find some much needed information about the media psychology of all video games, including those that have attracted the most concern and confusion. And what better timing to cover this legendary series than after the launch of the new installment and during this period when mental health and well-being are growing concerns. I want to address Doom and not what it does to us, but how we use Doom to manage our moods, increase self-esteem and vitality, and take a break from our anxieties. So, what is it that keeps us going back for more Doom? More ripping, tearing, running, and gunning? What psychological and emotional benefits do we gain when we load into Doom that keeps us coming back? The biggest factor would be flow. The pacing of Doom is expertly fine-tuned to encourage feelings of almost uninterrupted flow. Playing Doom is a never-ending forward dance of confident carnage and accomplishment. And flow is an optimal point of engagement in an activity where progress is intuitive and just challenging enough to be deeply engaging but never boring or too difficult. It's that feeling we get when we're in the zone. Once we get good at it, the gameplay is so fluid and rewarding that it's almost calming and trance-like. If you've picked the right difficulty setting for yourself, Doom is a near-perfect example of a flow experience. As the Doom Slayer, you effortlessly leap toward your enemies and execute them with complete confidence. The developers of Doom purposely wanted to create an environment in enemy AI that would invite players to push forward and run and gun. This is in contrast to other FPS games that might encourage strategic stealth or over-reliance on ranged weapon. In Doom, getting up close and personal with the demons is encouraged by easy, automated mechanics, plentiful rewards, and glory kill scenes. Enemies are programmed not to overcrowd or attack too often, leaving all the agency and power in the player's hands. Getting into feelings of flow, whether it's in a calming puzzle game or in Doom's hellscapes, delivers the same benefits. After engaging in flow, research has shown we feel cheerful, strong, active, concentrated, creative, and satisfied. Self-esteem increases after a flow experience, and people who are in flow more often have higher self-esteem overall. This makes sense. As the Doomslayer, we feel powerful, strong, and untouchable by whatever scares us in our real lives. With flow, we're also getting the benefits from experiencing mastery. When we beat a level or kill a tough demon, we feel good for a reason. It's the sense of mastery and control. Players love getting better at games the same way we love working on any new skills. Just as we love learning to play new instruments or study new languages, we gain the same fulfillment from beating Doom on ultra-violence or nightmare difficulty. Each of these activities gives us feelings of accomplishment. Feelings of mastery is actually an important psychological resource that people need to stock up on to feed their overall sense of self-confidence in their abilities. Feeling more masterful in one part of our lives, even in our hobbies like gaming, helps us attack other obstacles with more confidence, which can be very beneficial during a time of stress or loss of control, which might sound familiar to many people right now. Low Semantic Affinity Low Semantic Affinity is a fancy way of saying that this game has nothing to do with our real lives, and that's very, very helpful. To get a better look at what kind of psychological experience Doom gives us, we can look at Doom's mood management levels. These are the four measurements that help us understand what different media experiences offer us in terms of psychological challenge or recovery. Doom's hedonic valence is pretty low. This is how light and cheery the game is. In essence, the games are meant to be fun and indulgent, but the subject matter is pretty dark. But Doom is a hedonic game overall for sure, inviting us to only consider the present moment and inspiring a sort of zen mindlessness with its flow and intuitive gameplay. The semantic affinity is low, meaning this game does not make us think about our actual real-life problems or responsibilities. The excitement potential is very high, and this is where Doom invests everything. It's supposed to be very exciting, an adrenaline punch to the eyes and ears. And lastly, the absorption potential is very high, meaning playing this game was made to pull us into its environment, absorbing us into play and letting us forget everything around us. These mixture of levels make Doom a gripping and thrilling oasis away from our daily lives. 
At this oasis, you're given much needed clarity with linear objectives, you move with incredible speed and strength, always cool-headed and exact in your executions. You don't need to worry about bills or school or work or even reloading. This is very healing if we're feeling overwhelmed by uncertainties and unknowns in real life. Playing Doom can give us structure and help us rest our weary critical thinking skills. We can feel momentarily invincible and in control without any of the responsibility of being in control. One of the best responsibility escapes we get from playing Doom might be our escape from needing to perform emotional labor or other emotional skills. Emotional labor can be exhausting. We think about others all day family, friends, significant others, strangers, and even society in general. It takes a lot of energy to always be using our emotional intelligence to navigate relationships and social situations. Although emotional intelligence is crucial for a healthy and balanced life, we can't be expected to always be on every moment of every day. Doom is a haven away from needing to think about anyone or fuss over any feelings. It gives us a much needed respite from the nuanced heavy lifting of moderating our behaviors and expectations in our home lives, social lives, and work relationships. As a Doomslayer, we care about nothing but saving the world from demons. And given that our enemies are actual representatives of evil and wouldn't stop wreaking havoc even if we tried to talk them out of it, we can do whatever we want without remorse or worry and we can do it to blasting metal music. We can rest the parts of our minds and hearts that work very hard to keep ourselves and our loved ones emotionally balanced. In this way, Doom is very helpful for the emotionally exhausted. We are invited to hang our emotional intelligence by the door, grab our helmets and arsenal, and forget about all the expectations, pressures, and uncertainties that were plugging us a moment ago. Research shows that by getting much needed psychological rest, by distancing ourselves from stressors and engaging in media with dense and hedonic feedback, we can recover crucial psychological resources that will help us get back on our feet and contribute to long-term well-being. So while our problems won't go away after an hour of playing Doom, if we play mindfully, we can find ourselves re-energized and more confident in facing our real-life obstacles after we're done. There's an overwhelming amount of research on violence in video games rooted in media panic. There have always been concerns that the latest form of media is rotting the next generation's brains. People were worried about movies, people were worried about books, and even Socrates was worried about the written word. While the evidence supporting the idea that violent media inspires long-lasting aggression is a little uncertain and too politically charged to pick apart in this one video, in fact you might need a feature-length documentary to dive into the motivations and methods of the past 20 years of violent video game research, I will include here that overexposure to violence may lead to desensitization towards violence in real life, which may not be the best for our mental well-being, so that means we might want to mix things up once in a while and play mindfully. Until when or if a consensus is met about violence in video games, I'd like to argue that we shift our thinking away from the fatalistic perspective of what games do to us, and instead focus on how we can use video games mindfully with agency and clear intentions for the psychological benefits that they can offer us. Relatedness The last benefit I want to discuss is the feeling of relatedness. Doom has offered players opportunities to connect to one another by sharing their experiences in the game sharing their love of the series, and the multiplayer modes as well. Research has found that with FPS games like Doom, players experience significant benefits from this connection as well as from the exciting gameplay. There will probably always be concerns and reservations about Doom and how far it goes with violence and gore. I wanted to make this video to help us understand what Doom offers us psychologically and emotionally, but just like with any media experience, if we want to get the most out of our time with it, we can begin practicing mindfulness and set our intentions before playing. Doom is very efficient at delivering its benefits to us quickly and enthusiastically. Playing Doom can be very beneficial for us if we're feeling worn down from life and need to feel strong, powerful, independent, and just have some energizing but challenging fun for a few healing hours. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more about video games and media psychology, please go ahead and subscribe and leave a comment about any games you'd like to see covered. And as always, happy playing.